to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to a well-designed business. It's Power Talk Friday. Today, Sonia Capasso of Capasso & Co. is on the show with me. I met Sonia a few months ago, and I have to say I've been waiting patiently for us to finally sit down and do our interview. At first glance, today's show is about Sonia and how she provides interior drafting services to the trade, you. With her own education in interior design under her belt, she brings a unique combination of passion for design and a skill in producing quality and precise technical drawings. However, it's also about how she ultimately works every day in her passion and how perseverance is the key to success. And then finally, it's also about the journey to finding your ideal client. And how, in order to do that, sometimes we have to be open, vulnerable, and how sometimes we have to fail before we can achieve meaningful success. Now, before we talk with Sonia, I wanted to remind you that registration for Luann University is open and we are in early bird registration if you're listening in real time. Early bird ends December 19th, 2024. If you have been knee deep into thoughts about your business goals for 2024, this is the perfect time to get those aligned. Okay, go to luannuniversity.com to learn about the full roster that we have available for you. But... I also want to know, did you know that I am teaching a class this year? Yes, my brand new four-hour intensive, The Making of a Well-Designed Business, The Workshop. I'm basically going to teach you my book. In four hours, we will help you, I will help you change the trajectory of your business. Get started on the right foot or rejigger it to finally be the business that you imagined it could be. Luann University courses in 2024 are only going to be offered one time this one semester. So don't miss your opportunity to take advantage of it. Go to luannuniversity.com to learn more. All right. I am very happy and excited to welcome Sonia to the podcast. Hey, Sonia, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Hi, Luann. Thank you so much for having me. So, Sonia, you listen to the show and you know that sometimes I love to read what you guys write to me when you um, pitch yourself to be on the podcast. And yours is another one of those because the first couple of lines are just, I love them. They're just adorable and I want to share it with everybody. (laughs) So you said, I asked the question, what do you want to teach my podcast audience? And you said, I want to teach your audience that when you follow your dreams, desires, and passion, success follows. I went to design school when I was 35 as a foreigner. I had to start with a GED in order to be accepted to college. I aced every test because I loved everything about design and couldn't wait to be a designer to the stars. That's what I wanted. But it turns out being an introvert would have obstacles. (laughs) And you said, I never quite made my own design business a success, but I've just wrapped the most successful year ever. And that is where I'm going to leave it because we're going to talk about those, that journey, right? That learning journey. And I just think it's so, my daughter, Christy on her podcast. And when she was at Luann Live, she kept using the phrase having self-awareness. And I think we throw the word around, but we don't actually contemplate it a lot. And when I read your thing, your, your note, 
it's like an incredible level of self-awareness. And I love that. It's like, this was my dream, but you know, an introvert, kind of hard to do. And that doesn't mean other introverts couldn't do it. I'm sure there's an introvert that's like, I'm a designer to the stars, but you found it difficult. So talk to us a little bit about that. Oh boy, it was so, so difficult. I feel like I've tried everything from the beginning of my starting to go to school up until this point, you know, you name it, the marketing, I've tried it (laughs) and nothing worked. (laughs) Um, So it was, it was really like four years of just failing Mm. constantly. Um, And it was very defeating, you know, not in the beginning, but after a while it got to me and I became really, really depressed. Mm. Um, but I just was thinking about that just today. I said, I did not have plan B, like I normally do in life. I have plan A, B, C, D, E, but for this part, I didn't. So I just kept going. I was like, something just needs to work. And, um, funny enough, when, um, while I was in school and getting out of school, um, and while I was trying to get my design business going, I kept getting drafting jobs over and over. My professor would recommend me to her friends and um, then they would recommend me to their clients and it kind of just evolved, but still not enough for me to be successful um, up until the point where I became so depressed when I was like, okay, something needs to change. What do I do? Mm. Um, and then at that point, actually, this was um, interesting because I really, I felt like I was in pretty deep depression at that point. Um I went for a walk and I was not in the mood to talk to anybody and I either listened to my music or talked to my mom. But that day I said, you know, let me just get a book today. Let me try to find an interesting book. Hmm. And I found um, Jen Sincero, You're a Badass. Oh, You're a Badass. Yeah, Jen Sincero. Yep. And it starts the book with everything that I was feeling at the time. She was like, I know, you know, you're good enough. You're doing everything right, but things are just not working. What what are you doing wrong? And that first chapter, I was like, this is the book for me. Mm. And that book opened up, basically reminded me of what I've already known is that Um, There's plenty of work out there. There's plenty of opportunities, enough money to feed everybody. And I just need to believe it. Mm. And that kind of started my self-awareness and um, just becoming more um, conscious about myself, my thinking and how I'm thinking and processing things. And I swear to God, from that point on, I made the list like in the book, it talks about make a list of all the things that you want to do within months. I had everything on the list that I wanted. I had a small list, but I had it all. Wow! And I, yeah, it was pretty interesting. That, you know, what's interesting is I, as we're recording this just yesterday, I did an Instagram live with Sandra Funk and she was talking about mindset and she brought up how at Luann live, one of the designers raised their hand and said, you know, I need help because I know I'm not in the right spot, but this is what I'm doing. And every single time my CPA emails or calls, I avoid. When my bookkeeper wants to set up a meeting, I I don't do it or I cancel it. And, you know, Sandra's point yesterday was the things that you focus on multiply. And she was focusing on her fear around these conversations about her money because, of course, she's coming to it like many of us have with only a partial, if at all, understanding. And so you resist what's not comfortable. And so you just described as you were in this state of seeing everything that was wrong, it kept creating more wrong. And then you sat down after listening to this book and started to write the things that were possible. Is that what you, you're, ta- you're saying? Pretty much, wow. yes. And just, and I, I've always known this. I've always been super spiritual. I trusted my gut all the time. But I think it's just, you know, failure after failure after failure. It wears you mm. down after a while. Mm. And then, I, at least for me, I fell into a spot where I just didn't know how to get out of it anymore. And like, what else do I try? 
and it was just so simple. Just remember, there is the, the simple mantra, money comes easily to right. me, and it does. And it was just those little tiny things that just changed how I kept thinking and processing and opening my mind to all the possibilities, and everything just opened up like a floodgate. That's so amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. I love that. And that was exactly what Sandra said. She said, I would love for you to start to use the mantra, I love money. Money loves me and I live in abundance. <laughs> yes, it's true. And there's nothing wrong with it. Money is very good and we all need it. And without it, we can't do the things we want to exactly. do. Exactly. Yeah, that was one of the things that I had added to the conversation yesterday is that some of us, you know, get into this negative pattern of characterizing money and the want of money as a bad thing. And literally, money is not a living thing. It is a vehicle. It is a tool. It is, you know, it's like you get in your car and drive around. You don't have this emotional attachment to your car being good or bad or, you know, devious or anything else. And when we can separate ourselves and understand that money is the tool that moves the world for good, you know, for good good and bad, but it's the person behind it, not the money. That's the good or the bad, yes. right? Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Interesting. So, so here's the thing. That's an, that's an, an interesting and difficult thing. And I don't want to go past it because Sonia, there might be somebody listening. That's where you were in that that I, and I hear you, you know, in the beginning when you're doing something and it's not quite working, you're like, it's okay, it's okay. But then there is that <laughs> moment where you're just like, whatever, like, what is, like, and, and, and then, you know, to think about, like, if that moment hits you at, like, the second year where you're starting to get a little antsy, and then by the end of the third, nothing has really changed. By the fourth, I totally can empathize with, well, what is this for anyway? Why am I even bothering? Right. So go back and understanding that that book came at the right time in the right moment. And I understand that you had to be on your path the way it played out. But if you could talk to Sonia one year or two years before and maybe the book wasn't there, like what would you just is it just remember sooner? Like, what is it? Oh boy, uh, I you know it's interesting because I think about the way life works often. I'm an analyzer, and if somebody said that to me when I was two years in, I don't know if it would be the right time for mm. me to realize that I'm not supposed to be doing design with clients, mm. but I should be at this point where I am today. And at that point, when I started my shift from specializing in drafting. I was ready to be in that business, not before. Um, because as soon as I started with the first client, I said, this is it. Uh -huh. This is what I love. And I love it so much. And I don't know if I would realize it sooner. sooner. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting because Lorna Gross was on the show a couple of months back. And what she talked about was, quote unquote, the art of the pivot, of being open to the messages around you, from the universe, from yourself, from your family, from your clients, wherever it is, that what you're doing, if it's not right, it might not be the thing to be doing. And then, but we get dug in and we like, I just went to design school. I just got all A's. Like, this is what I'm supposed to do, right? But like, there's that point of being able to say, well, is this the right thing, right? And what you just said is at two years in, you might not if somebody had said to you, oh, pitch design direct for consumers and be this important, amazing technical drawer, you know, for designers, maybe you wouldn't have been ready to hear that message. But that's part of the message, isn't it? Is to, to be yes. open to something else, right? Yes. Yes. And I always say, I, I don't say no to things. I mean, unless it's something terrible and feels bad in my right. gut. No. But when I started in this journey, um, the first job actually was um, an accounting for a designer. And I said, I'm just not going to say no to anything. Oh. And it ended up that, that that designer said, I've seen your work. I don't want you to help me with the bookkeeping. I, I want you to help me with the design. And that's how it all started. But it was just because I didn't say no. Right. Because I always feel like 
things will come your way. And if you, like you said, if you're just open to it, you don't know what one opportunity will lead you to the next and to the next and to the next. And that's been my whole life. It's, I look at everything like a chain reaction. One person will connect you to the next person and everybody has a purpose. Yes. Yes. And, um, and that was the thing that opened up my mind and my ideas into this business that I am in right now. And the thing that I'm getting from your not the word, Sonia, but from your voice, what I'm getting is you actually, it, you're happier. You're more fulfilled doing the technical yeah. drawings for 10, 12, 15 designers than having your own individual retail clients and maybe having five jobs a year that you do drawings for and the other the, the millions of months of the year you're spending on sourcing and, you know, meeting contractors. Yes. Like, it sounds like this is actually where you're supposed to be. It's not like a second place, like, hey, can I make money here too? No, this is, <laughs> this ended up being a dream job, wow. an absolute dream job. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yes. And you know what it is? It's, I, when I try to do the design with people, I'm not a good salesperson, mm. so for me to to try to sell the design idea to a client was really hard, and they usually didn't have enough money for what I wanted to do, so that was <laughs> always hard. But with the designers, I'm collaborating with similar minds, with creative people, and people who I, am, I admire and they inspire me, and I actually have over 160 clients, and most wow. of them it's been insane and most of them are repeat clients so I worked on so many projects throughout the year and just working on amazing amazing houses and properties and it's just been I've been living the dream I mean it's, it's, it's a weird thing to say but I have it's been wonderful I love it and there there's the introvert you know because you know an extra, I'm like I'm living the dream and you're like I've been living the dream <laughs> I am. And it's, I still sometimes have to pinch myself. Like I've, I've made it to this yes. point. Like, wow. Yes. You know, like, look at me. That's awesome. <laughs> so That's so awesome. Well, and you know, what's interesting is because I've said it on the show <clears throat> a couple of times and I've said it in real life coaching sessions often. If you're not cut out, like in your case, you you did not like the process of selling a project and all of that stuff. But let's just call it if you're not cut out for the front end, like that's what I call yeah. it. If you're not cut out for the front end, if you maybe you can sell a project, but you're not cut out for going and bringing the projects in, rainmaking and networking and shaking the hands with the builders and the architects and the you know going signing up for the different committees in your your community, the cancer society and so forth, so that you meet the people who have the funds to hire the design or that you are like whatever the the gap is on that side I've often said to designers if that's not the part that makes you happy do you know how many designers in the country the world that need an amazing person like you on their staff you know so now you've zeroed it in to to technical drawings but to be the lead project manager on something, I never have to sell a job. I never have to go to a networking meeting, but the, the rainmaker, the principal closes a job, gets the client and says, here, manage this thing. You know what I mean? And you're just like, yes, love doing this part, right? <laughs> because it it is important to understand that the talent for design can show up in a myriad of different roles, right, Sonia? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, uh, and so what happens now is when you work with designers, um, because you have an education in interior design, are you, are there, are there some situations with some firms where you are part of the collaborative process of designing or it's like, no, 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 Luann, please. I'm in my lane. I get the drawings to execute and that's that, or is it dependent client to client? Like how does it actually work? How do your services show up and how do you support designers businesses is really what I'm getting at. Okay. Um, so with all the clients that I have, it's, it's really such a variety of extreme from A to Z. So some clients are very, very particular and they just want me to draft and get their ideas down to the millimeter precision and that's it. And then I, the other end of the spectrum is where I have clients 
who are really busy and they just offload to me a project with a plan, the basically the design intent, and then I go and do the design of the first draft. Oh. So I help design um, when it's needed and sometimes suggest things as I'm drawing. They'll, sometimes they'll say to me, um, I've, I've have a plan or idea or a sketch, but I don't draft. Can you just see if this is going to work? And if it doesn't, can you give me a solution or something gotcha. else? So, um, it's oftentimes collaborated okay. more, more often than not. I would interesting, say. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. And, and I don't know the makeup of your company, 160 projects. Are you the only person or do you have people that you work with? Like how do, how do you manage that many projects? So um, those are clients. I have a lot more projects than that. Oh, whoa. But <laughs> yes, I, I know it's been. But um, before we go there, um, and the reason why um, I have so many clients is I had an intent when I started and I worked really, really hard for the first two years and I'm still doing the same thing. I still don't know how to say no. But my plan was work as hard as you can because at first, it was working, you know, 10 to 15 hours, then it was 15 to 20, and I really wanted to get to a full-time job. So I still have that idea. Don't say no to anything. Just work your butt off because, it, you know, the business ebbs and flows, yes. and I just want to have a steady stream. When some of the clients drop down, then the other will pick up. Um, so it is very busy, but I do have some help. Okay, okay. Yeah, I have. I do outsource at times when I need to. Um, and I have some great networking people mm -hmm. who we've been friends and in the same business for a long time. So I will offload right. when I can. But then it comes back through you. You're approving yes. it. You're eyeballing it. You're making sure yes. it's right. Yes. yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's awesome. I mean, look, that's, that's by the way, exactly what the designer is doing. <laughs> She's outsourcing yeah. to you. So yes. there's no yes. shade on outsourcing. <laughs> no, and, and I tell them, I'll say, I have to send this to somebody else to help me out. And it's usually the modeling part when I do furniture modeling for elevations. Um, and I have an amazing person. And sometimes it is drafting. And sometimes it's built directly to the person. Um, I have one person as a 1099 employee. Okay. So it's, um, it, it's good. Okay. Okay. And then the actual yeah. services. So you're, you're working in chief architect for the most part, and you're doing CAD drawings, you're doing construction drawings, you're doing elevations. Uh, you, you just mentioned modeling. Are there other things that I'm not aware of that are in that suite of services? Uh, that's basically mm -hmm. it. Um, I, I used to use AutoCAD. I don't do it anymore. So I will refer those clients to somebody else. But yeah, it's basically everything in chief architect and modeling. And I do teach SketchUp modeling too through um, presentation by design. Okay. And at this point, you are not taking any of your own retail consumer design projects. So this is strictly your business model. Yeah, I have no desires <laughs> to do that at all. <laughs> you know, this is so great. I, I, I'm just not, like you were saying, I'm just not cut out for it. I'm just not. And I, it's uh, just the reality of, I prefer to just roll out of my bedroom in my robe, usually <laughs> sit by my computer all day and just work. Well, you're like me. I keep wanting like Gimlet Radio or NPR to buy the podcast. Like I still, I'll still show up. Just like, can I just sit in the chair and do the conversations and then somehow the rest of it all just happens by somebody else? <laughs> it's like, come on, make me an offer. We'll sell this thing. <laughs> you put it out in the universe. It's going to come. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and it's so funny because you know as i say that i'm thinking yeah it would depend on what that contract says <laughs> <laughs> the business mind never stops <laughs> oh my goodness so i i you know i think it's interesting now when you you're you're listening to this book the stroke of luck and intervention from the universe to like let me like listen and download this book today Curious, what led you to that book? Did you, had you heard about the book? Did you just Google in Audible, you know, savemylife.com right now? <laughs> <laughs> it was just pure intuition. I opened the um, Audible app and I just kind of scrolled through some books and that one just popped up. Wow. Like it, it just, it, the, the cover was perfect. It just grabbed my attention and I clicked on it and it was going upwards from That's there. That's great, right. I almost feel like, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but I almost feel like 
it, when I think back to when I've been in a moment similar, right, where I'm just like, whatever, like I'm literally at the end of my rope and something comes across, something like that. It's almost like when you were describing it, I could be like, well, I don't know why this one's attracting me, but at this point, you know, it really doesn't matter because I, I, I just, you know, I just need to get out of my own head. And if this is dumb, then I'll find out. But like, almost like I don't really have a lot of expectation at this moment because my hopes and dreams are so stamped down, right? It's just like, you know what? I'm going to, I'm on a walk. Let me listen to something. And then to have yeah. the stroke of love, right? Of genius of it being the right one. Yeah, exactly. And it, I think, I do think things come to you at the right mm. time, but you have to be open to receiving yeah. the messages that are always around yeah. us. That is the um, other part of this, by the way, because often the universe will send us a message and we don't listen and we stay in our swirling the drain. Right. And we just and then what happens is two weeks, two months, two years later, whatever, the same thing comes by us. And then all of a sudden we're willing and happy and listening. And you just sort of are like, huh, <laughs> I pushed that one back last time. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Even in that, though, there's the lessons that you get in the in between times. Right. That I don't yeah. know. I have a hard time counting anything as wasted. I have a hard time. Do you feel that same way, Sonia? Yes, I do. Um, I just bought a house that I regret buying, but I no longer <laughs> regret buying. <laughs> so so as, as much as I was upset over it um, for the first month, I, I took it as a really good lesson. I had to get out of my head. But yeah, there nothing that we do in life is really a wasted opportunity right. or a wasted lesson. It's just not. I know, right? I, it's funny because I, I meant one time someone, you know, it was very serious. I don't know if it was a podcast interview or whatever it was. And they were like, tell us a time you failed. And I'm just like, I, I, you know, <laughs> and it's like, and it's not that I'm not failures, but I like, I have the hardest time on the reflection back of counting anything as a failure. I mean, yeah. because if you didn't go through it, you know, you couldn't have gotten the growth and made the next decision and the next decision was better, right? Yeah. 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 It's just a process. It's just taking the steps the, of the letters to the wherever you're supposed to go. And sometimes you sleep, but you st keep going forward. <laughs> yeah. I was telling somebody at a live event that I spoke at recently, I asked them, I said, anybody raise their hand if they know why WD-40 is called WD-40. And I was surprised. I thought somebody in the audience would be like, you know, take my thunder. And literally everybody, it's like a hundred people and everybody's like, no. And I'm like, well, it's because it was the 40th version <laughs> of that concoction. <laughs> like, you know, like yep. think about that. Somebody has this idea to like make this lubricant. And the first 39 times it doesn't work. This isn't like I'm solving war and peace. This is like a making a lubricant. It's maybe I don't know how to do it, but nope, that 40th time they did it. Yep. <laughs> it's yep. a household name across the freaking world, right? Yeah. You know, and it's so easy to give up when you just keep falling. And I feel like as long as you have that goal in front of your eyes and you know that it's so clear and concise, just don't give up yeah. it just it's gonna happen it's just the law of average like you try enough times something is gonna click sooner or later so now that's interesting right there because would you say that because like you're saying just you have you have what's in your sights clear but in this case what was in your sights was running the design firm but are you saying really what was in your sights was i'm enough I'm capable of being successful. And maybe you were deterred and deferred from success because you kept thinking it was through being an interior designer to the retail. So, but what was in your sights was your inner value. Like, tell me about that because the other wasn't the thing that was working, yeah. right? The, the thing that was in my inner value was being successful, being independent and having financial freedom. Um, and those were the things that I was a housewife for many, many years and I didn't work for a long time and didn't have my own money. And that was something that I really wanted. Yes. And that's what drove me 
um, to have it. Okay. Okay. So that's yeah. what you have to keep clear. It's not keeping clear, like hanging on to the vision of I right. went to design school. I'm going to be a designer. It the vision of this is the vision for my life. This is how I want my life to be. I want to be independent. I want to create my own journey. I want to yes. create my own day to day. I want to have my own checkbook. Yes. 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 I, but I still wanted to be in the yes. design business. Yes. Just didn't know, you know, which level because there's so many specialties within the interior design and this is just the one that clicked for right, me. Right, right, right. No, understood. Understood. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. the the one to four years with having the one clear vision of the way you want your life to be and constantly banging it up next to being a designer for consumers. And then it yeah. wasn't until the 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 shift. It's like, oh, I have a skill set yeah. here. It can be put to get, yeah. it can be put out in the universe in a different way. Yeah. 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 And maintain yeah. the other vision of independence and, you know, wealth yes. and, and, and abundance for yourself. Yeah. yeah. And it's so interesting when I first went to school and we, and even though it was just 10 years ago, we started with drafting tables and paper, um, vellum paper, pencils. And I would sit down and I said, oh my God, this is heaven. I love that. It, it's so tedious, but I am, I just, I was in like, I can't even describe it. It made me so happy. Um, and I should have realized it then. That's what I really should be doing. Mm. Um, but it took me a long time to just mm. fig- figure it out. Well, the yeah. appreciation is better now, right? Yes. yes. Oh yeah. yeah. Much better. Yeah. Yeah. And And the thing is, if you had gone into it to begin with, after three, four years of success at it, you might be flirting around saying, well, I could be a designer. I could go out and do mm-hmm. that. And then you would end up jeopardizing those relationships and then finding out, oh, <laughs> then I don't like to do True. it. <laughs> yeah. Right? You know, if, I, if you're just patient enough and remember that nothing happens before it's time. And I, 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 that's hard. It's hard for me every day. But yeah, I just have the patience and trust that everything will unfold the way it's supposed to. So interesting, because there is that um, concept of we're both talking about that there is no failures, that the, the patience and trust that the things we're going through, we need to go through. But we're also, I think, on the same page of we don't just keep kicking our head against the wall and expecting a different result. There is a right. point where we have to take ownership of the change, which might be scary. And so you listen to the book, you get back in touch with your core values as a person and your core worth as a person. And what happens? How does the opportunity and the voices and the guidance come from within that you start to sty- you know at some point you have to say yeah okay so i'm going to give up on that like and 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 maybe the first time the word is give up on it but eventually it's not i'm giving up on that i'm going towards this it's very it's the same thing but it's characterized in our brain very differently so how was the switch for you from hearing the book, processing it, and understanding it's not a quitting, it's a not a giving up, but it's a choosing a better path. How did that happen for you? Um, well, when when we moved from Florida to Connecticut, um, I basically had to start everything from scratch, um, all my contacts and everything. So once we moved here, I did try some e-design and some local people, um, still wasn't working, but at the same time, I'm w- I was really active on Facebook and all the design groups, and I kept seeing Chief Architect as popping up over and over as a huge need for it, and at the time, I only knew AutoCAD, and another person that kept popping up, replying to all the problems was Kelly Friedline. Oh. And I was like, wow, this woman, she's really amazing. I am so impressed by her. So um, I think we became friends on Facebook. And then um, at the same time, I also noticed the Nay Branson, who runs um, Elite Design Services for Designers. Okay. Um, and I knew that I could get a temporary job through her. Mm. So I said, you know, 
we just moved. We have two houses we're still paying for. <laughs> There's not really much money coming in. I said, I just need to do something in the meantime. Okay. So my first post in one of the groups, which was taken down, which I did not know. <laughs> no, it wasn't no, allowed. No pitching yourself. <laughs> no, no pitching. And I, I did pitch myself. But this is so interesting because I pitched myself in the group, in Claire Jeffords' group. And I said, hey, um, I do drafting. I use AutoCAD. I'm charging $30 an hour. I'm trying to build my business. And while I'm building it, I need to supplement my income. My, in my mind, I was still going to go back to being a designer eventually. Um, and within a half an hour, my post was taken down. I was like, oh, shit, what did I do? And I felt so bad. But not before I got three clients out of it. <laughs> so... So, um, and at the same time, Kelly messaged me. She's like, what are you doing that you're so good? You cannot charge $30 an hour at your level. You have to double it. And I was like, double it. I can't even make any money right now. Are you crazy? So she said, no, trust me. You are good enough. Do it. And so um, the next client that called me, I offered my $60 an hour rate. And she took it. And then the client after that took it. And it's just, <laughs> I signed every person that called. Oh, my God. And then pretty much after that, you know, as I was doing all this work, the design idea of working with other people as a designer, it just went out the window. It was just, it was so quick. Wow. Because as I started drafting, it's just my love just kept growing for it. Mm. And it was just just like I said, dealing with designers who are creatives, it just fed my soul yeah. and my creative creativity. So yeah, it was uh, for me a match made in heaven. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it's funny because yeah. you mentioned that that was one of the favorite parts when you were in school, and you didn't connect it then, right? And it's interesting because. I, I can't think of the person who, what, when, where, but I've had designers say to me, oh my God, and the drawing, nope, I don't want to do it. I don't like to do it. You know what I mean? Because you do have an affinity to it or not. I Where were we? Oh, we were just, uh, Vin and I are thinking about doing some renovation at the beach house. And I had a Facebook, Facebook, FaceTime walkthrough with the architect and she was going through the process, explaining to me how her process would work, which was really fun and interesting to hear. And I hung up and I was like, she knows her stuff. That's great. She walked <laughs> right through it. There's no bull crap there. There's no like gray areas. It all made sense. I was like, yeah. Right. And, um, and of course she's from the community and I'm not willing to say yet who it is, but you know, you guys know her. Um, but anyway, um, what you call it. Um, the thing was, I remember, and one of the pro part of the process was, and then at that point, we, you know, me and my team, we will come down and we will take exact, exact measurements. And it was so funny because as she described it to me, I was just like, oh my God, I'd rather hang by my fingernails. <laughs> and then when I was telling <laughs> Vinny later, he's like, could you imagine having to do that? <laughs> I know. Yes, I can. <laughs> <laughs> I a chance. Yeah. Oh my God. And it's just funny. Like, you know, it's so great. I love that. That, you know, you're using your design degree, you are on your path and what you thought you would be. And even interestingly, you know, you're like, oh, I'm supposed to do it for celebrities. You probably are working for celebrity <laughs> designers, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And some really amazing clients that I hear. Um, and I have signed non compete, not non compete, not um, NDAs, yes. not like I can't discuss yeah. it. So, yeah, I've worked on some yeah. really amazing so clients. So, you're actually yes. doing that, all the yeah. things. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but in the, in the background. Yeah. Yes. Well, and it's funny because it reminds me of Kim. At Window Works. Now, you know, Kim is now one of the partners at Window Works, and but she came to work for us like 13, 15 years ago, whatever it was. And I remember when she was about, I don't know, three years into working for us. And she was so good from the beginning, just like from the beginning, like one of those A plus employees. And we knew it and we knew it. And every month and every year confirmed it. And then you get to be about three years into it. And you're thinking, is she going to leave? Like, is she going to leave? Cause she came to work for us when she was probably 21, something like that. And so you're just like, Oh crap, this kid is going to go out on her own, you know? And of course she came to us with a four year degree in interior design and took the job at window works as a window treatment specialist 
when she had just gotten laid off at a at an interior design firm. And so I never thought that she'd stay. When I first took her, I was like, I don't just get me through the next year. I don't care. I was desperate, you know, but then as the weeks and the months and the years went on, you're like, oh, shoot. And I remember finally just having the conversation with her, like, you know, pretty much, are you going to leave? Like, what are you doing? Just like rip the bandaid. Let me know. You know? <laughs> um, but th- at that point, you know, I had always developed the designer business at Window Works back from the eighties. And at that point she had done Kips Bay with me, once or twice through different designers, um, of course, which, which apartments on Upper West Side or, you know, Museum Mile um, or like the big homes at the Jersey Shore. And we were doing them through our own retail clients, but also a lot of designers. And um, that was when she said, t- kind of like what you said, she said, you know, if I went and worked, first of all, she said, at this point, I have no desire to own my own business. And, and even now she's a partner within the management team, right? Um, and she said, but with one designer, I see one type of work and I see one type of client. And she said, but with window works, like we work with, you know, Charles Paverini, who's doing insanely, you know, over the top detailed draperies and all of this stuff. And then we work with, you know, at the time, Sandra Funk, who was like clean lines and, you know, like, you know, it's just, and she just really appreciated Every day was a new adventure that she got to use her skills in, right? Yeah, yeah. and I, I, that's exactly what I tell people. Being in this business, if I was a designer for myself, working with maybe one or two clients a year, one or two projects a year, versus having all these different projects, they roll in and out all the time. And, I, and not only that, like I get exposed to different products and things that I don't even, I have no clue. Right. And it's so nice because um, a client will will do a, some interesting project with um, something co- popping out of the island with a TV or <laughs> um, whatever. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, another client comes and she's like, what do we do about this? I said, well, one of my clients. Pop a TV a out of nothing. <laughs> we can do this, you know, but it's it's what it opens me up to being able to help my clients in a different way, too just because I'm exposed to so many different projects and designers who have all these great contacts and um, uh, what do you call it? Um, exposed to their creativity, the ideas, the problem solving and all the, right? Yes. All the things. Yes. Well, and that's true. I mean, I can recall days, my days of collaborating with, you know, designer and their team on different things. And, you know, there were always times when, Me and maybe the principal are on the project and we're stumped. And I'm just like, yeah, I know that's what you want to have happen, but like, I'm not seeing it. Like, I'm not a magician. I'm a drapery expert, you know, but then like your back's against the wall sometimes. And you're just like, I'm sorry, I need a solution. And so then I'm like, all right, let's come back with Billy because now you bring another brain into it. And then maybe they bring, you know, the construction guy into it or something. And now all of a sudden you've got four people and it isn't typically one person has the idea. One person has an idea that the other person yeah. adds to and builds on. And the next thing you know, you're like, yeah. huh, we solved that. Aren't we amazing? Everybody pat ourselves on the back, right? Exactly. It's exactly how it is. And it's it's such, such a good collaborative process. And especially with some of the clients who are single op, um, business operators. Yes. They're just one person in one house. And sometimes it's nice to have a different set of eyes. Oh, so true. Um, somebody who's not seeing the same things over and over and they'll be like, I'm stuck. Yep. Do you have an idea? Yep. Um, and it really helps. And sometimes I'll bring uh, an idea out and sometimes it bombs. Yep. And sometimes it's a winner. <laughs> and she's, you know, clients will come back and say, the client loved it. Thank you so much. And it's the best email to yes, get. For me. Yes. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So thinking about all that you've been through and how it ended and is, is on the journey of something so beautiful and gives you such fulfillment. Any final thoughts, words to somebody who's listening and is either in that state of, I can't see my way out, or they're in the state of, is this my Jen Cicero book moment? And what do I What's my next step out? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like your, your yeah. message could be the Jen Cicero message that you received, <laughs> right? 
you know, I'm just a believer in following your gut instincts, mm -hmm. follow your heart. I really feel like if you listen, truly listen to yourself, you can't make any wrong moves, mm -hmm. you know, but be honest with your thoughts and feelings. And I think that's really, really important because like we were saying before, you may have this idea of doing one thing, but maybe that's just not right. And maybe there's a tiny little nagging thing in your brain saying, I don't know if this is it, but I really want it. But maybe it's not it. Like, listen to it. Be open to it. Try a hundred different things. Something will click sooner or later. And just be open. And I, I do say this to people all the time. Don't say no. Maybe the first time you're going to try something, it's going to bomb and you'll know that's not it. So try something right, else. Right. I love the nuance that you said in there because to me, it's my version of the inside voice. It's, you know, right? You do. You know. You know when yeah. you're, you're pushing uphill. And sometimes we keep pushing uphill because we can't imagine going sideways or any other direction. So we just keep doing it. But I know that we all know literally no. And so I love that that's the core of your advice is to listen to your own instinct and your own heart and your own gut, because when you're really listening, and that's what you said, when you're really listening, the truth is there, right? Yeah, exactly. And you put it so nicely. Yeah, no, so, yeah. I, I love that. I love that. Well, Sonia, you are Wonderful. I love getting to know you. Um, I know this is the beginning of getting to know you. I just, there's, I just have that feeling. I just, <laughs> I yes, too. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm grateful for you sharing your story today. I'm a hundred percent certain that you've pri provided some inf inspiration, some ideas for somebody that probably needed to hear it today. So thanks for being with me. Thank you so much, Luann. I really appreciate it. Sonia went to design school at 35 years old, and then she spent, in her words, the next four years failing. That's how she described it, right? Before she ultimately and finally landed on what she calls today her dream job, right? Her dream business. This is what finally happened. And she told us how she started doing accounting for an interior designer who then later noticed her talent and asked her to help with design instead of bookkeeping. This is what she said was about taking chances and saying yes to opportunities that were presented to her. In her gut, she always knew what her calling was, but had a hard time finding the way to it. I think though, and I think she said it in the episode, if you ask her now, she'll say the entire journey was worth it and needed to happen. I hope you took note of what she, she did when she ultimately realized her potential. She then came out. It's like a coming out, right? She connected with other industry colleagues and she found the Facebook groups. It's essential to cultivate a strong network of colleagues who can provide guidance, support, and assistance in resolving and opening, resolving the issues and opening the doors, right? I always say it, community is important and it can help you in more ways than you could ever imagine. I love, love, love that Kelly Friedline reached out to Sonia and advised her in that DM and helped her understand the value of her services. Kelly was on the podcast back in episode 784, which of course we will link in the show notes for you. Kelly discussed what it looks like to take a unique career path and what she had learned as she carved out her business journey. Even though Kelly didn't actually know Sonia, she saw her service and noticed the quality of what she was offering and she contacted her and messaged her, encouraged her to charge more. This is what the community is about. Support someone when you see them because sometimes the support will come back to you. You never know. I love that Kelly paid it forward. Another insane and great coincidence was in Claire Jeffords' Facebook group. If you're not familiar with Claire, she has joined us several times on the podcast, four times to be exact. She was also just one of our exhibitor espons sponsors at Luann Live 2023. Claire does have this amazing Facebook group that she has created and is literally full of collaboration and support. She, and in addition to the Facebook group, which is free, and we will link it in the show notes, she has developed 
her Interior Design Boss Academy. And through the Boss Academy, you can get more in-depth mentorship and coaching. And we will also link in the show notes how you can connect with Claire for that. I hope that you've enjoyed listening to Sonia's journey. I hope that it has inspired you to keep working towards your dream. All things are possible when you have an open mind, an open heart, and you listen to your inside voice, right? Now, one more reminder before I go. If you've ever been curious when I've mentioned exciting windows on the podcast and you wonder what do we do, well, you're invited to join me, the VIN man, and our partner, Steve, as we and some of our exciting Windows members host a free Zoom event on December 14th, 2023 at 12 p.m. Eastern Time. We call this annual December event, Ask Me. You'll have the opportunity to hear why our members have joined Exciting Windows and more importantly, why they decide to stay. Then you can ask any questions you might have about Exciting Windows of ourselves or our members. And if you're wondering how we help you build a better window treatment business, this Zoom event is for you. All right. You want to go to excitingwindows.biz forward slash ask us. All right. We'll also put that in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. I'm so grateful that you do show up and spend the time with me. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.